you all know that I'm a massive fan of the Fubal plant light. And I've tried a fair number of lights in my time in this hobby. Long awaited, <laughs> very, very frequently asked for. We've got a Fubal Aqua Sky. I've been testing it for months now. Let's talk about how good this thing really is. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're talking lights. This light. This is the Aqua Sky 2. Now you guys know I've, I've had this in testing for quite a while. Um, I've, I've tried a fair number of things, and there's some good, there's some bad, but let's get the disclosure out of the way right up the kick. This particular Fluval Aqua Sky that I have here was provided to me by Fluval. Uh, with that being said, they were going to give me one light. I specifically requested the 36 inch Aqua Sky 2. That was a, a thank you for uh, the guides, the, the ultimate guide that I made, um, just because they've been able to steer a lot of folks like you to it and had a lot of great feedback from you about me. So thank you. This is actually kind of your guys' fault. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, the full disclosure here, this light has been provided to me by Fluval. They do not get to see this before anyone else. I'm not being paid. Um, I do get to keep the light, so that keep that in mind. I mean, for those of you who want to be ultra skeptical, there you go. But uh, let's talk about the good, the bad, what makes this thing tick, and whether or not this might be the light for you. So, first off, let's talk about some of the, the key features and what sets this particular Aqua Sky which is the light that is on the tank behind me here, apart from the plant light. Number one, uh, the 36 inch is only 27 watts. That's like half for, for those keeping score at home. It's about half the power of a plant light for the plant 3.0. Uh, the other big thing is that if you actually look at it, I think they have a good picture here, right? I, I, we can manipulate the light later in some B-roll, don't worry, but You'll notice there's a single row of LEDs rather than the multiple LED rows that are present in a lot of plant and marine lights that Fluval makes. So this is less LEDs. You have a sequence where it's a couple of white LEDs, then a RGB LED. So it produces red, green, and blue light. Uh, unlike the plant light where you have several individual colored LEDs, this is a specific combo LED. Now, the good news is it has the same warranty. It has the same water resistance rating. Um, it, <laughs> it has a, it uses the exact same Fluval Smart app. It's just slightly different because it's got a different color scale. So a lot of the features that are really great about the Fluval plant light are present in the Aqua Sky 2. One key thing is missing. On the Fluval plant light, you have a button that you can control the light manually. That's not present on the Aqua Sky. It is controlled 100% by the app. There are a few people out there who that's going to be a deal breaker, right? There's, uh, and I mean, they even say it like right here and on the top, right? App controlled LEDs right here on the package. So in order to, you know, make this light a little more economical, they take away a few features. And part of it is the power, the number of LEDs, but also the manual control button. Now, the good news is, is that this produces a very thin, very small, very lightweight light. It has a nice, easy profile. It's not very complicated. You're not, it's not bulky or weird looking on top of your tank. I mean, you can see it here. It's basically a similar profile to the Fluval plant or a much thinner version. If you're familiar with the plant 2.0, it has a similar like ridge structure on the top. Other than that, it's, it's kind of what you expect out of a Fluval light. Good warranty good quality, a little more expensive. Uh, this particular light is like $107 or something like that locally to me. Basically, it's a little over 100 bucks for the 36 inch one where the uh, flu ball plant would be like 175 if I remember correctly. So, you know, about half the price roughly. If you compare that to say like the JCMP or a Beams Work, a Night Crew, uh, most of your budget lights at a similar size, those lights typically come in around $60 or so. So you're looking at paying an extra about 60% more for this light 
That gives you a much better warranty. And for those of us who love the app control, you get the Fluball Smart app. Let's talk about that for a half sec. I'm going to actually pull my app out real fast. I know. Not scripted. You can tell, right? This is the most recent setting on mine, and it'll come up on the screen, but you can see it on my phone too, right? This is my pro mode setting. You get pro, you get auto, you get manual. Now, if you look at the manual, we've shown this before, it's a lot like the remotes that come for some of the, the other Fluval lights, like in the Flex and stuff like that. Auto lets us play with a, a proper auto mode. And then, I mean, you probably see my light freaking out behind me, but what you do, right? <laughs> and then pro mode just like what we would get in the Fluval plant. This is a big thing to me because it allows us to save, it allows us to export, we can keep our settings across multiple lights, we can mimic the settings of someone else that we like, some crazy YouTuber perhaps, and more importantly, it allows us to continuously tinker 1% at a time with how much power the light is putting out. Now, in manual mode, you can only do in, uh, I think it's in 10% increments. So it's not quite as great, but use the auto. It's so good. Uh, and, and there's ways to trick the auto mode if you really need to. We'll talk about that in the ultimate guide that will come out later. Uh, if you're looking for, like, all the in-depth settings, that's going to be in the ultimate guide. This is mostly a review, but we will talk about the settings I used to really get a feel for how this light works. So what's it good at? Let's talk all the pros. Fluball Smart App, a little more economical, low power, so it's not going to draw too much power for those of you who uh, might have one too many fish tanks in a room, like me, <laughs> and you're, you're playing a game where you only have so much power on a circuit. Uh, and, and more importantly, it's not, gonna, it's not pushing so much power that it's really easy to oversaturate your fish tank with light and potentially cause algae issues. That being said... This is not a high power light. So if you're trying to do a high CO2 aquascape and you're like, I want to save money on my light, you're going to run into disaster. I've tried several much more high demand plants in the CO2 tank behind me. I lost them all, <laughs> including uh, there is a, a crypt uh, pink flamingo that actually used to be right here, basically. And uh, it did not make it. It was not getting enough light to make the pink flamingo happy. However, every other crypt that I've put this light on has gone gangbusters. This thing, you can, you can sign, seal, deliver this thing as far as I'm concerned. This is the low light plant A tier light. Every low light plant that I've had in this tank and another tank, the tank where my angelfish and Bob the sponge are, all of them have done great. Crips, Anubius, Boost, Java Fern, uh, low demand stems. With this thing on them, they have gone nuts because the light is not so intense that they start running into algae issues and stuff like that. And I mean, I'm in summer. I've got sunlight coming in through this window. Somebody's probably going to be like, well, that's probably because of the sunlight. We didn't start getting a ton of light and this thing's been on this tank a lot longer than that. But for the most part, if you actually notice, a lot of the front of this tank is shaded, and that's where most of the flu ball has been doing its work. I have seen better crypt growth from this light than any other light I have ever used thus far. That's in both CO2 injected and not CO2 injected over there. We'll have some B-roll. I'll show you some crypts. I'll show you some plants, including uh, a rare hygrophila that's in my lower tech tank. They're all doing great, I, and and this is despite the fact that I've got uh, plecos in both these tanks that throw all sorts of stuff all over the place, and yet uh, these plants. It, when you get to B-roll, we'll notice in the in the CO2 tank, you're gonna notice there's a bunch of like random floating Java fern. The Java fern is doing so well in this tank on low CO2 with this light that the baby plants are growing like crazy and becoming good size like. You should plant this somewhere in an aquascape plant. It's, it's been nuts. I love this thing. I really do. Uh, now, there are some cons, right? Uh, the, the biggest con, of course, is that the low power means that you can't really use this with high-demand plants. So your super fine-leaf plants, uh, your, your 
rare, ultra crazy stuff, your white Anubiuses, all those things that need high intensity light. This is not the light for you. Not at all. Look at the plants, look at um, Ch Chihiros, all those like bigger, more expensive, significantly more powerful lights. You need to start looking at those things, unless you're in a really shallow tank. With that being said, if you're in a shallow tank, a 40 breeder or, or shorter, this light's great. It's really good. Now, the only problem that you're going to run into uh, that I think this is another negative for certain people is the natural coloration of the light is a warm yellow cast. So that means that when you look at that light, it looks yellowish. Some people do not like this at all. Plants do, <laughs> because uh, it just it's where it sits as a part of its spectrum and its, its whites and stuff. But some people don't like that look. They prefer a cooler look. They want a more bluish white. And this is all in the Kelvin temperature. We could talk about that in different videos, but that's not important here. For some people, that's going to be a negative. Me personally, I actually like the warmer cast, but that's because I carry, I do a lot of rainbow fish and rainbow fish look great in warmer lighting. What uh, a lot of people who tend to do like cichlids and bluer fish, they don't tend to like warm light. They like a little cooler light because it shows those blues a bit more. That's a, a potential negative for those out there. So really the big negatives are it's lower power. You can't really manually control it. You have to use the app on your phone. If it loses power, it will forget what current time it is, but whatever program you had it on, it will restart that program, assuming that once it resumes power, it's now midnight, zero hour, right? This is something I talked about a long time ago with the plant light. It does the same thing. So there are ways that you could use a Wi-Fi timer and your auto or pro modes to control this for all sorts of crazy nonsense if you really wanted to. But that's some complicated stuff. We'll save for the ultimate guide. And finally, um, the, I think the last thing is that that color cast is about the last negative. And it is slightly more expensive than a lot of our uh, normal budget-friendly lights. So let's talk settings. Uh, just so you understand the settings that I've used on my testing thus far, this does not account for what I'm going to necessarily suggest in the uh, ultimate guide, but this is what I've been testing with now and what results I've seen. And, and why I speak kind of highly of this light. Uh, first, we'll look at my auto mode. Put that up on the screen now, and uh, I'll go the line slide it right here on my phone. Really simple. Uh, this is 100% white, 75% red, 90% green, and 20% blue during the day with a two hour sunset and a one and a half hour sunrise. There's no night light whatsoever, uh, all that kind of stuff. So here's. Here's what's going on. This was purposely designed for my uh, higher power CO2 tank, right? I wanted to dump a lot of light onto my tank, uh, and that was designed to take as much light without putting too much blue and focusing mostly on the white and green. These are kind of the, the, the bonus to the Aqua Sky is that it actually has green light, and green is really good for plants. You'd be surprised at how efficient it is, but... It's not like 100% everything. And, and the, the keep in mind, like this is dimmer, it's lower power, right? So it's not going to look as vibrant as, say, a Fluval Plant or the JCMP that we've tested in the past. But the growth is unreal. <laughs> I've had, under that light setting, I've had more Crips flower. And literally the, the density of my Crips right now is unreal in this particular tank to the point of where I need to fit it out. And I didn't think I was going to get that with several rare crypt species that are kind of notorious for taking their time to grow. They're not doing that right now. They're going gangbusters, which great for me, right? Uh, my pro mode on the tank is on the screen now. And you can see it's basically a high white and green curve, very similar to my day sim. Uh, and then it's sort of keeps a lot of that with a really low blue throughout the day. The goal here is we have a, a ramping period, right, where we're going up to about 75% in white, and then it slowly tapers through the long part of the day, working toward 100% power for a short period, then dipping back off, and then eventually falling off kind of kind of strict. This is designed to be more of like a, a summer day. Uh, the, the whole concept is a lot like the current light that we have now, where you... you get to a reasonable amount of light pretty fast and you fall off kind of fast, but you've got a long period of stronger light 
for a less powerful light, if that makes sense. Uh, and then in my non-CO2 tank, I used the same pro mode setting. And the goal here was, I'm not going at the high intensity for as long as my automatic setting, but I am putting a reasonable period of time with some strong light. That particular tank has a lot of slower going uh, plants in general. There's a few faster ones, the Hygrophila being the big one, but you've got Crips, 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 a little bit of uh, a Java firm that's not as happy because the Plecos keep messing it up, and some various, some all Anubias that are in there kind of floating around. They've all done really well, right? I can like just look over here right now and I can see the super dense set of Crips. My Crips Boralis has been having lots of child plants. Uh, and B-roll, of course, you've, you've looked at this tank, but it's doing really well. And, and even Bob the Sponge is doing okay in there. So, does well for both sponges and plants. Not bad. Uh, so basically what we're looking at is that low-tech and high-tech works good. Uh, where would... Where would I put this in my, like, echelon of lights? Uh, is it now my new favorite light? No. Is it my new favorite light for a very specific scenario? Yeah. If I were doing a 40 breeder with light CO2 that had basically Crips and Java Fern, which, if you don't know, that's some of my favorite plants to plant with. I have lots of tanks that are just Crips and Java Fern for my rainbow fish. I love that look. I love what the rainbows do in those plants. They, they get to do a lot of... Uh, you know, messing around, they got places to hide, they have stuff that doesn't take too much of their upper swim space. So, it tends to be a favorite of mine. This light is perfect for that. Anything, any tank that's like 17 inches or shorter, so like my 75 long, 40 breeders, 20 longs, 30 breeders, 33 longs, like 40 longs, all those long tanks for the most part, and breeder style tanks. The, the more shallow tanks that have a wider footprint overall, but aren't quite as tall, this light's fantastic on those kind of tanks. Some of your smaller tanks too, your 10s, your 20s, those are all going to be fine. Uh, even 29 gallons, I think you can get really, really great effect out of this light. But once you start getting into some of your like 24 inch tall tanks, so your 125s and 120s, uh, your 75 gallons that are like 18 inches or 90 gallons, this is where that lower power is going to start hindering you unless you really want very low light. So you're just trying to do like Crips and Anubias or something like that. And, and the goal is to have pretty low to very, the very underside of medium light down toward the substrate. Then you're okay. But if you're looking to like, I want to have a great carpet. This is not what you're carpeting your tank with. Unless it's Crips and you're going to wait a really long time, but... That would probably actually work, but you know, if you're trying to do your your Monte Carlos, your hair grass, your uh, dwarf baby tears, this is not the light for you. It's not intense enough. There's not enough power. You're going to need to look at something with a lot more oomph, right? You need that that flu ball plant, that whatever a ADA solar RGB if you want to go real crazy, or UNS Titan, one of those nonsensically expensive lights. You're going to have to start going that kind of route where you have significantly more power as opposed to the 27 watts that you're getting out of the Aqua Sky 2. End verdict. Is this my new favorite light? Only in a very specific scenario. And even then, would I choose this light over the Fluball plant? Or uh, if I was trying to do a budget version, maybe the JCMP? Yeah? I would probably take this over the JCMP, if only because I like the control, and you guys know I'm a bit of a control freak. I don't know that I would take this over a flu ball plant that I could just dial down a lot, but if my goal was to save some extra money, then yes. This little guy's going to do the trick. So, with that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Have you tried an Aqua Sky? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, please, just keep in mind, folks, I had a lot of people who are like, this is nowhere near as powerful as the flu ball plant. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. But um, in my first video, I had a lot of those kind of comments. Just you got to keep that in mind. It's only 27 watts. It's one row of LEDs. It's, it's a much cheaper light. It's designed to be less powerful. It's like the entry level to the flu ball plant. But it's a really strong entry level. 
So, with that being said, let me know in the comments down below. Have you tried this light? Have you been thinking about this light? Do you uh, completely disagree with me? Do you agree with me? I'd love to hear whatever your thoughts are based on my review. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a little thumbs up. It's the usual make the magic YouTube algorithm happy today. <laughs> For those of you who are new to this channel, uh, I do quite a few uh, various product reviews, lights, plant tips, uh, rainbow fish, guppies. We talk about all sorts of stuff. We have live streams every Tuesday, videos every Saturday. Consider subscribing, maybe ring that little notification bell. All those usual YouTube beg things that we have to do because that's YouTube, baby. That's YouTube. <laughs> As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.